Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. I've long talked about how in the 80s, Iowa-class battleships had six boats assigned, but I recently found uh, an occasion when the ship carried a seventh boat of a completely different type. Now, we've talked about this in several videos in the past, but just to recap, most of the boats we carried are roughly this size. This one is the captain's barge. It is 40 feet long, although sometimes the captain's barge is 33 feet. We would typically carry two boats like this, one for the captain, one for the admiral. We also had two 40-foot Liberty boats, like the one we recently got running again to bring the ship back up to her full complement of six, and two 26-foot surf boats uh, that are hung on the davits amidships. Again, I've always been proud that Battleship New Jersey uh, has her complete set and is the only one of the museum battleships to have a complete set of boats. But we recently found footage in the museum's collection from 1988 of the crew operating a seventh boat on board. So we came up here to try and find evidence of that boat. And uh, so far we've been unsuccessful, but we do have the video that clearly shows it on USS New Jersey. So the boats that we have uh, that have the solid hull are practically out of use with the Navy anymore. They've been replaced with rigid hauled inflatable boats or RIBS, R-H-I-B. In fact, if you go on an Arleigh Burke destroyer or practically any other modern ship, ribs are the only style of boat you'll see. They've got a fast outboard motor. Uh, they're inflatable, but with a rigid hull so that they uh, are, are pretty well buoyant. And they're significantly faster both to deploy and use than the uh, older style boats that Battleship New Jersey carried. They start to gain prevalence in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, however, you don't really see them retrofitted on too many uh, older ships. They, they keep using the boats they had, but as newer ships come online in the late 80s, early 90s, you really start to see these things deployed. Uh, however, in 1988, Battleship New Jersey does a cruise to Australia for their bicentennial. And uh, nothing says colonization like battleships, the ultimate symbol of imperialism. So the United States sent Battleship New Jersey to Australia to represent. During that cruise, there were significant protests from uh, Australians and others about the fact that US Navy ships were capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Uh, and so what I believe happened was Battleship New Jersey had a rib assigned on board for dealing with this. We recently found out that at the end of the ship's career, the ship would have carried an EOD team for uh, disabling mines specifically. So this might have been part of an EOD detachment, it's explosive ordnance disposal. Um, when the detachment came on, their boat came with them or it might have been something just put on board for this deployment, or it might have been the newest thing that the, the crew were able to get. Uh, regardless, we see it being operated by Marines in 1988, and it seems like they're patrolling around the battleship while she's in Sydney Harbor and other nearby areas while she's got her other boats in the water. Uh, this is the one that seems to be doing force security, which is what ribs are used for on modern ships today, so it makes sense. So, uh, as best we can figure, the rib that we see was somewhere in this area. As you can see from the footage, they just put a rubber mat over the deck, over the, the gunnel here, and sort of just have a couple of burly Marines put on life belts. You can see that belt with the, the bag on the back. That's an inflatable life vest. Uh, life belt, they just pick the thing up, carry it over to the edge, and drop it. And there's a single J davit but it doesn't quite look like the normal J Davids. So behind me, you can see a J David there that is shaped like the letter J. Uh, th this David seems to be at more of an angle, which is much more similar to what Arleigh Burke destroyers have. Uh, it's more of a 60 degree angle uh, David that is used for rib boats, uh, which I guess is 
saying the same thing twice, rigid hull, inflatable boat, boat. Uh, but regardless, that looks more like that kind of davit. So we're not quite sure if it's slotted into one of the existing uh, davit brackets that's here. For example, there is one right here. Waterproof cap comes off and then you slot the davit there. So there are more of those slots on the ship than there are davits. And wherever you need one for lowering cargo down a hatch, lowering a boat over the side, or holding the accommodation brow like this one would have, uh, this is where the ladder would have been to get up to the ship from the water line. Um, it may, maybe they just repurposed that, although it looks more like an H-beam or an I-beam to me and not a round uh, pipe structure. So it could well be that one of the weld marks here in the gunnel is from where that was installed and then subsequently removed. So again, I don't know if it was just carried for that one trip, that one deployment, uh, or if it was carried for the rest of the ship's career. We haven't yet found enough evidence to confirm that, but I'll be sure to keep you guys posted with another video. It's worth mentioning that the early ribs uh, despite being the newer and better, faster technology, did not catch on right away because they didn't work so well at first. The outboard motors uh, had issues starting, especially if they got wet. So sitting out here on the deck of a ship in the middle of the ocean, how do you keep the thing dry? Uh, the, the motor would get wet. I've heard of other ships where they referred to that boat as please, please, because you're sitting there pulling on the, the ripcord starter saying, please start up, please start up, please start up. And sure enough, in this video footage, you can see a Marine down there continuously trying to get the motor to turn over to start it. Uh, so it may be that the thing doesn't work and it's removed right away. Um, we just don't know yet. This may be the only time that a battleship ever carried a rigid hauled inflatable. I had never thought that the Iowas did um, until I saw this footage on New Jersey. If you are aware of other instances of Iowa-class battleships having ribs on board, or other ships, other battleships for that matter, let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to uh, continue donating to support the museum. You can also help us out by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.